This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's Friday. Finally, the last day of the week gets here. And uh, this is the Ramble. It goes until midnight tonight, Eastern Time. That's on the East Coast of the United States. So you can uh, figure out what time it is where you are and whether it is live or not live. And if I uh, just go right over here, you know, move your move a little bit that way, would you? Because when you turn that way, we lost your head. Okay. We don't want. Oops. We don't want you to. Hold on a second. I got to do something here. Uh, we don't want you to lose your head. Wow. Okay. Uh, then I'll uh, I'll just do it this way. Okay. Wait a minute. Here we go. There we go. There we see you. Hi. Okay. How you doing? Wait a minute. Got to turn on your mic. Hello. Yeah. I'm trying to operate this whole thing Happy from Friday. the keyboard. What? Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. I took off today. Did you really? I had a blood test. See? What? what, what, what Look. Well, you got to hold it up to the camera. They can't. Oh, see? Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> they, they had a little thing they taught me. To do that uh, that supposedly um, uh, works better oops that was a fade uh, it works better uh, like I, I just got a little dot and it uh, it just remains small this is just a little dot huh this is just a little dot really yeah yeah well in any event uh, it an event in any event uh, um, uh, so uh, you're you're feeling okay though I mean why did you get a blood test today because for my annual physical, because I, I, I was too lazy to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning at his place to get the blood test. So I'm going to see him at lunchtime in a couple of weeks. So I got the blood test at the lab. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see if this will go to... Uh, no, damn. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, let me see here. Now I can cut. I'm using the keyboard to do everything. Here's the two of us. Hey. Together. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. So anyway, so you, so you didn't want to go to the doctor. Wait, why, why couldn't he just do it whenever he saw you? Because you can't eat for like 13 hours before. So if I went at lunch, that's like, you know, the day before. Oh, wouldn't he see you earlier? Well, the early appointments um, were like late into late May and, you know, he was I was supposed to see him in Feb, and then we had that big, or March, we had that big snowstorm that never arrived, so he canceled all the appointments. So Uh, this is kind of the makeup. Yeah. Okay. Boy, your head is really filling the screen there. That's amazing. Is that better? Yeah, it's better when you sit back there. It's a little more, it's a little more even with me, see? I can't see. Well, well, don't look. (laughs) So anyway, um, how, 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 so you just went and got the, where'd you get the blood test? At Quest Laboratories what? on 2 West 86th Street. Yeah. Then I went to the gym. And then you went to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. I took Did quest. you have to make an appointment with Quest? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I think I use them You do it here. online. It's great. Yeah. And then when you come in, they have the system. There's no people there. You just kind of sign on electronically. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> so they get your blood drawn. Well, then that person comes out to take the blood, but there's no reception. There's yeah. this big electronic screen, and you sign in there. Yeah. Maybe I should take my camera and do this a little more. With Here we go again. No, no. No, that's Here too high. Here we that's too go high. again. There we go. Is that Another right? There we go. There again. We go. Well, I just I want to be the same height you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, finally, I think we've got this running okay, you know, and I can, uh, I can shift back and forth between you and the two of us, and I can do all of that. I can even dissolve. See? Do that. I can't see it, you so can't I, see I, it. I don't know. So anyway, uh, let me see here. A uh, couple of things. Um, uh, so you went, you got your blood drawn. That was exciting. You see, this is what happens when you get to be our age. No, this is what happens to you when you never leave the house. That the most exciting thing is getting my blood drawn? No, but but that's it. I, I mean, I can't leave the house now. You don't want to. I can't leave. walk. Oh, come on. Don't give me that crap. No, this thing is you killing You go me. and get a shot. 
I don't want to get the shot yet, and he doesn't want to give it to me yet. You know, it's like he said with me behind my knees. He well, see how it is and call me or four or five weeks. I said, no, give me the shot right now. I'm not going to come back in four or five weeks. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Give me the shot. And I did that with the son with the shot here. He said, well, see how it is how, in four how, weeks. That's, that shot hurts like a mother. It hurts, but they numb it first. I mean, you're a big boy. and By the time you feel the pain, it's over. Well, I mean, I, it, the pain here has to get bad enough oh, that the pain of that one will be a relief. You know, you don't know what pain is. You know so don't something, even give you know me something, that crap. Don't be the goddamn fucking martyr, okay? You always are with illnesses. Like, you know, your illnesses you talk about continually, more than I even talk about mine. It's I'm, not no, true. No, I, and, and your answer to that is, well, I really have an illness. Yeah, yeah you, well, you know, I, you know, I really have something wrong with I my knee. I understand, but you don't know pain. Most men do not know pain. They don't know pain? It's true. Oh, I live it's with true. you. I know pain. <laughs> I know pain. I live in terror of this woman. Okay? Better. No, I live in terror of her. She literally has di- dictated the way this house will run. Efficiently. Like And clean. Let's talk about the making of the bed. Now, to begin with, I have to make it every day. Well, he has to do something. So, about so make the bed and it, empty the dishwasher. Then empty. Well, I don't mind emptying the dishwasher. The bed I mind making. You got in the bed. Because down. I don't understand why we make a bed. Because it's fresh. It freshens the What do you mean nothing. fresh? Those sheets have been. No, they, you want to get in with all crumbled they, up they, they, food they, and, and sheets. And, our, our, uh, our cleaning woman couldn't come this week. She was sick. Okay, she was sick. And so, therefore, the sheets we are sleeping on have been stewing in our sweat and our juices for about two weeks. So don't tell me it makes it into a fresh bed. <laughs> it's just neat. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised you don't tell me to change the sheets every day. I would if I could. You would if you could, but then yeah. I mean, you would have to wash them. In okay. Our... I did a wash this week, and yet we're still without gas. Uh-huh. One pair of underpants <laughs> from you. <laughs> No, no. It was a five day laundry. It was five days. It wasn't five days. It wasn't five days. It was because I had five t shirts and five other Why are you telling them this? (laughs) Because. Uh, Because I know that I I, 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 I get rid of them every time I see track marks. (laughs) Well, it must have been a a dry week for you. Yeah, well, you know, I forget things. I'm an old man and I live in this house and I forget stuff. No, oh, that's your excuse. Well, it's I forget stuff. That's I really your excuse. have. I for, I forget how to operate this. I'm, oh. I'm I'm believe me. Pretty soon you're going to have a drooling guy who you're going to have. I'm going to go. Who are you? I'm going to get you a cot and lock the that door. That will be the- that will be the great thing about me getting Alzheimer's. I won't recognize her. And I who's going to get Alzheimer's first? You. I think you. I think you've already got it. My mother had dementia. Dementia. Yeah. yeah. My mother had dementia too. It, it's it, it, it. Dementia is the same as Alzheimer's, but without the the medical component. Uh, Alzheimer's is your brain literally how people die. The brain shuts down so badly it forgets to breathe or forgets. Well, that's to, Alzheimer's. Yeah. That's yeah, Alzheimer's. and 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 everything else. So there's a medical too. component to Alzheimer's. To dementia, it's just your, you know. La la. But uh, have we gotten a name for this? But didn't we used to call it like uh, getting old? Getting old. <laughs> and dying. You know, I'm I'm dreading the day I find my keys in the refrigerator because they had this ad on television. Or the milk in the closet. Where, where the woman is going. I don't know where my keys are. Uh, dear, they were here in the refrigerator. Does your wife have Alzheimer's? And you're going, <laughs> oh my God. One of these days I'm going to wake up and I'm going to say, where are my keys? And I'm going to go to the refrigerator and it's going to be in the well, refrigerator. Well, let me tell you what he does. And the only good thing about not having gas for the last five months is he has gotten into the habit of leaving the flame on on the, on the stove. Oh, I know you said gas. I thought you were referring to... My gas. diet and not having as many farts as I normally do. Well, but you've been leaving the gas on in, on the stove a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, so that's well, like... Well, because it's very quiet. Don't give me that quiet. It's because you're old. It's very quiet. Because <laughs> you're forgetting. No, it's very quiet. He walks away all the time. So I have to come here and I say, Alex, come here. 
And she can't just turn it off and say, hey, guess what you did, asshole. No, she's got to, like, rub my nose no, like I just I'm say, a puppy. Because if you don't like I'm a puppy. If you okay? don't see what you did and turn it off yourself, then it'll continue to happen, although it still continues to happen. Thank God we don't have gas. Yeah. What's going to happen when our gas comes back? We're five months in. Are we five months in? De- December to January to February to March. This has been February. terrible. We're into our and then, then we're going to have to fight to get our gas turned on to our uh, laundry. We'll, we'll take that one step at a time. Otherwise, I'm going to take that pipe and hit the plumber over the head with it. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, they, they removed the pipe. They went, they went to, the, uh, uh, to the dry uh, dryer, dryer. dryer. And um, now uh, they have to petition Con Ed because they said every apartment was only told they could have like one only are registered for one appliance so they don't want to screw up with con ed when they come to inspect everything so they remove the gas pipes to the dryer going to the dryer uh then i asked the guy well how uh, what do we do he said we use petition uh, uh, the plumber uh, has to petition uh, just ask con ed for permission to hook in a dryer and they will go Sure, and then we'll inspect it when it's through because I talked to Con Ed about this. And, and you know, they're not going to withdraw, uh, withdraw. But then I asked the guy who works for him, So, how much is it going to cost us? And he said, Oh, the plumber will probably charge you a thousand dollars. And I'm going, It's the plumber who disconnected it in the first place. And you hit the guy, that same guy told me, He said, Oh, I can rehook all these pipes up in my lunch hour. Yeah, well, you know, it's that easy a job. We're going to get a cost estimate from other plumbers. Yes, I'm sure other plumbers will do it for far less, far less. And, but first, we'll find out what this guy's going to yeah. charge. Take it yeah. one step at a time. Let's get the gas back on first. Yeah, this is, well. This is getting this is getting a little bit ridiculous. You know, had the landlords put more backs on the job, you know, it would have been done a long time ago. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, let me see. There's something I wanted to talk to you about, but I can't remember what I want to talk to you about. Did you did you remember? So where why don't we just sit here in stunned silence for the well, next? Well, there was there minutes. was some place that you were thinking about vacation, and then you forgot. Did uh, you yeah, remember I can't it? remember. I saw it on some was it, documentary. Was it near Spain? No, it was some place completely different, in a place I didn't think I wanted to go. Well, what we'll do is we'll get a map on the computer and look yeah. at it tomorrow. How's that? I I wouldn't remember it. Yes, you would. I won't remember it. I'm telling you. You know. Uh, I mean, I would like. Uh, I, I think it would. Maybe it was Ireland. Well, Ireland. It was Ireland, and I've never had any great desire to, to oh, go I to do. Ireland. And Scotland too. You could drive through it. They say it's beautiful. It, it, well, Scotland as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I thought about about uh, Ireland, and I uh, also uh, let's see. I don't want to go to Israel. Ugh. Oh, I don't either. Um, I don't want to go. To, I don't want to go to the Middle East. Oh, Dubai might be interesting. You know who's going to Dubai? Teresa. Really? She's going next year, yeah. Uh, Dubai is not a, is, a, we ha- I have a friend there. That's he right. listens to this show, That's Bree. Right. Bree, I get, call in. Any day I'll knock on your door, Bree, and ask you for There's other countries I'd rather go to, though. Like, the, like where? Well, I, I wouldn't mind going back to Paris and driving around. I, I would love to go to Australia. I'm, I'm, I've been to Paris a lot. so I have I, too, but I, it's yeah. just so nice. Um, I would love always, to go to always, Australia. Well, I've always wanted to go to Russia. I have no desire to go really? to Russia. Really? Yeah. There's so much history there. I don't care. You know? They're so bad. Who's bad? The Russian people are wonderful. The leader. And the Russian women are gorgeous. The ones that are gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, the, the others. <laughs> but you can't blame it on, you know, you can't blame the, the, the nation on the leader. Yeah, look at us. Yeah, look at us. Exactly. Um... He's fussing to get into a war, a preemptive strike. Yeah, preemptive strike is right. You know, what so. a waste. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're in trouble. We're in a lot well, of we trouble. We really are. And, and I'm almost glad that we're at the end of our lives. <laughs> I mean, because this place is going to self-destruct. Well, I, 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 I don't want us to self-destruct. I'd like to see us survive. But, I mean, it really, you know, it makes you wonder. Makes you wonder what's 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 going to happen. What's it all about? Yeah. You know, uh, I I think that uh, there's I don't I don't 
You know, I have said before that it doesn't matter who's elected president. He can only do so much harm while he's in office, and that can all be corrected by the next guy. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm beginning to wonder if I was right. Uh, you were wrong. You, you know, I think in his first hundred days, he's managed to do a lot of uh, danger. In fact, I'm going to talk about something later. The FCC is completely dismantling the broadcast system. Wow. I mean, it'll. It, it, he, uh, today they did something, and I'll I'll tell the full story when we do the the uh, uh, citizens panels. But the president, um, of the uh, FCC rather, it okayed the ability of radio stations to own even more stations Jesus. in their in their cluster and in their company. Uh, there was a certain, it, even though they raised the limits years ago. That's why you have. I was Clinton, somebody wasn't like it? somebody like a um, um, what it was Clear Channel called themselves now, uh, who had like you know eight stations in a market, but you couldn't go. There was a cap, and now they're going to do away with the cap. Wow! So the consolidation of radio companies uh, is going to be didn't Clinton major. start that? He did. Uh, what he did is he did a deregulation of telecommunications. It was part of a telecommunications act, and a lot of it had to do with the phone company. And he just signed that, not realizing, I think, that he was signing away uh, uh, Other. broadcasting. He was broadcasting up till that point. If I wanted radio stations, I could own seven of them, but only one a market, and in seven markets around the United States, I could own seven AM, seven FM, and seven TVs. If I owned a newspaper, uh, I think I could could I, I don't I can't remember could you I you might, might not have been able to own a radio station or you could own one station you could see you could have a television station AM and an FM all in one market I think you could only have one of those if you were a newspaper Paper. but that was completely thrown asunder so this new guy uh, there there are only three people on the FCC right now they're usually I think five and uh, two have been fired, and now there are only three. So this passed on a vote of two to one. So the guy there who's the liberal is having more trouble. Okay. And this guy who's the head of the FCC is out to literally dismantle broadcasting as we know it. He's an absolute, he's horrible. They're all horrible, every point in. And so if you think that when you turn on your radio or your television, you're getting one opinion all the time, Guess again, it's not as bad as it's going to get. Yeah. The worst is EPA. I mean, that's just well, beyond you, sad. What I find wrong about the attitude this guy has about the EPA is EPA stands for Environmental Protection, Protection. Agency. What is so wrong about protecting Who the environment? I think it was Bill Maher. He said, they breathe too. <laughs> you know, we all have to breathe. Yeah, through their mouths, however. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they breathe too. I mean... What they say, oh, well, you know what it's going to do? It's not going to put the onus on people to blah, 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 to have to, you know, live up to these regulations, these federal, these harsh, horrible federal regulations that allow us to breathe. Remember, folks, what the country felt like, say, 30, 30 years, years ago. ago. You were choking in every city. You went down to L.A. The smog was so thick, your eyes burned, you sometimes couldn't see your hand in front of your face. And because of these regulations, you can. And and the, the coughing has gone away. And we don't know how and much... And they cleaned up the Hudson. It cleaned up the Hudson. Hudson. Uh, and New York City, when I first moved here, on your windowsill, you had a layer of soot. Well, we used to that sit literally, if you if you ran your finger over it, you got this stuff that you'd go have to go wash well, off. Well, we used to sit up on the roof of, of our apartment. It was a brownstone. I mean, you know, you put your baby oil on, and then by the time you left, you had all these black specks stuck to the baby oil. <laughs> it was yeah, just sitting there. Yeah, it 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 was it was absolutely it was gross, it, it, horrible, and uh, and it's okay for coal companies to dump in in in, in fresh water. Did they just okay that? Yeah, that was part of it. I mean, what what are they Why thinking? Are they, yeah, what are they thinking? This I mean, yeah, the and, oceans and, are almost useless. And by the way, <laughs> this has nothing to do with political thinking. It has nothing to do with uh, how you believe. It's greed. Huh? It's totally greed. It's totally greed. greed. Yeah, and uh, although I I read something the other day that the National Coal Museum 
has decided to put up um, pa uh, sun panels because it's cheaper than coal and more efficient. Yeah. The coal museum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I mean, we, we have to stop using coal. We yeah. have to stop using oil. We have to start looking at ways of powering ourselves that doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't affect the environment and doesn't affect you and I. I mean, whatever, in fact, let's put it this way. When I say the environment, I mean you and I because whatever affects the environment affects you and I. It, it's, it's as simple as that. So, I mean, uh, this guy who... You know, I mean, let's face it. I don't think that fat fuck is going to live more than about four years. He, I he, hope he, he dies you don't a have violent that, death. You don't have that much body weight on you and survive even as long as he has, right? Uh, you know, I think in the next four, year, four years, we're going to be attending a presidential funeral on television. I hope so. Well, no, I mean, what do you mean you hope so? Then look who's president. <laughs> you know, what's his name? I, I even forgot his name now. And Rand Paul will be vice president. You know, of all those bozos, I would rather see Rand Paul in that is sitting in the presidential seat than these guys because these guys are morons. They are. Rand Paul at least has a vision of some sort. <laughs> he was an know. eye doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good vision too. Yeah. Uh, but no, but I mean, at least he has a vision. I mean, I'm not a, a big fan of his, and I won't, uh, I, I won't say that at all. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of his, but I, I. Would rather see him in office. You know, it's kind of like now I'm saying Nixon wasn't that bad. You know, oh, uh, George W. Bush, oh boy, what a, what a cakewalk he was, you know. I mean, this is just so beyond our, our even thinking about it. that it, And it's true, it's become real. Well, we, we wouldn't have, um, uh, we, you know, we, we wouldn't have done this... Uh, um, uh, a few years ago, we wouldn't have even thought any of this was possible, you know? But it is, and that's the problem. It is. It's a major problem, uh, and he's making money off of it. That's the worst. Huh? That's the worst part, is his making money off of he this. He is making money a lot. off of it, isn't he? Yeah. And his children. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I just think that it's... Uh, uh, they just opened, what... In Turkey, they opened up a couple of oh, Trump yeah. hotels. Yeah, the dictator. Get closer to the mic. The dictator that just got in by a questionable election. Yeah. Uh, Ivanka was there for the uh, opening of the Trump Hotel. Yeah. In Turkey. Yeah. And uh, uh, Turkey is, uh, you know, uh, Turkey has the, uh, has the ability to used be a dangerous. Oh, 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 God bless it. Uh, fuck. Hold on, hold on. Oh, fuck hold me. On, Am I, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, quick. Give me this so I can clean off my... Oh, this is just... All right. This is horrible. Stuff happens. Oh, God. This is just... All right. It, it's going to be... I'm just drawing it off. Don't even worry about the phone. I'm worried about the keyboard. All right. Uh, did you see what happened, folks? We're... we're Little emergency here. Big emergency. Oh, God. This is horrible. This is just nuts. Uh, well, it was bound to happen one day. Oh, what, what, what happened here? You spilled the coffee. That's what happened. What, what happened? I you spilled the coffee. No, that's but something happened. went wrong over here. Oh, there we are. Okay. All right. Oh, we're not even on the air. <laughs> we're not even broadcasting. Okay. Oh boy. All right. Get well, us I'm not going to be able to put the show on the. Uh, Why don't you? On the air. Up? What? While you're doing it, just open uh, it up. Uh, just open it up. Yeah. Oh wow! All right, all right. This is this is horrible. So Look ready. under here. Look under there. Wait a minute. Here, I gotta go here and clean this up. Oh man! Oh man! Okay, shit happens. Oops. This isn't just shit happening. This is oh, it's everywhere. Oh. <laughs> I'm never going to drink coffee anymore. Well, you again. shouldn't. <laughs> huh? I don't know why you do. Why I do? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, now, folks, uh, I hope, uh, well, maybe I can glue those two shows together. I don't know. You'll be fine. Oh, boy. All right, open it up. 
Wait a minute. No, I'm, I, I just don't even feel like doing it. Oh, shit. Alex, stop it. I'm serious. This is just, you know, this is really a mess. An just absolute, turn it back on. An absolute mess. Let me move this back, see? I and mean, there's stuff under here. All right. Oh, God bless it. Okay, just turn it back on. No, I'm not, I'm not finished cleaning up. We're back on with the audio. Hi. Well, I know what I, how I can do the audio. I can use the video as a, you know, as a, uh, as my... Don't drink and drive. Something like that, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Oh, this is terrible. Uh, well, at least everybody saw that out there. At least we have a clean desk now. Yeah, I'm just wondering, can I, can I, oh, that moved. Uh, this is all, Hi. this is ridiculous. Are we on? Yeah, ho hold on a second. I just want to make sure that I can. It's 10.30. I can type here. Let me, let me see here. What, what, what is there to type on? Live stream. Huh? Wait a minute. Here I go. Uh, huh? Facebook. Yeah, let me just try. Uh, let's see here. You're fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. I and it's 10.30. Well, tell them what it's happened, because all they heard was screaming and yelling. Alex spilled his coffee all over the yeah. the desk, which included, what's this called? Huh? What's this called? This. What's what called? This. Here, I'm still, I'm still. All over the keyboard and the yeah. board board. Board board and all of that. Okay. Okay, now we're fine. Now we're going to open it up because it's 1031. Yeah, well, and let me come back to my camera. Here. Can I roll over? Huh? Can I roll on over? Yeah, you can come on over here. I'm rolling on over. Okay, and the panel is there. Okay, all right. Well, let me, let me turn on the, uh, I hate when this happens, folks. I'm just, you know. If this ha well, I have, I've had this happen when I was on the air as well. Uh, let me get rid of some of these uh, people that are listed here uh, because that could confuse things. Let me see here. Uh, then, oh, it won't do anything. All right. Well, don't, don't move over till I'm finished doing stuff here. Listen to him. Yeah, there we go. And there's uh, my potter here. And get rid of him. And, uh -huh. Uh, um, uh, okay. All right. All right. Well, we're we're open and for business now. Uh, okay, we're open for business now, so you can uh, you can call us, uh, and, and it's uh, Gabnet Live, right? Let me get rid of these. Oh, hey, guess who's calling? Uh, this is uh, Bree from Dubai. We we're just talking about you. Yeah, we we're just talking about Dubai. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what does it say Check here? Check your speakers. Check my speakers. Why? It's they're fine. Oh God, I hate when this happens. Okay, I think we're okay now. Let me uh, let me cut over to you. Uh, let me see here. Chip the gas is calling. Chip is a newer listener. What is this saying? Check your speakers. I don't want this. My microphone is fine. Close this. Jeez, Almighty! Quit bothering me, Skype. Hello, Chip. Hi, Chip. Hi, hey, Bree. how are you? Turn on your camera, would you? It's not on? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but Bree, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, Dubai. Dubai. Is it is that a good vacation spot, or should we stay away? I want to stay away. <laughs> Bree, are you there? Bree. Bree. Where's Bree? Hello. Are you there, Chip? Hi. Wait a minute. Who's there? Are you, Chip? Can you guys hear me? I hear you. Oh, okay, good. Bree, how about you? Bree, can you hear me? There's Scott. Here comes Scott. Hello, Scott. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. I can. No, oh, okay. Camera coming up. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Hi. There yeah, we go. Okay. We're still trying to hear yeah, from Bree, but Chip, we don't have video on you, Chip. Oh, you don't. I'm showing it. Um, yeah. Rob. Let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Phil. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hi. Where's Bree? Bree, are you still there? Call Bree? back. Oh, Bree. Bree. Are you there? Uh oh. He's 
not. I guess not. Call back. Let me get rid of him. He says, Hi, what do you think of the call? Well, not much. <laughs> um, oh, here it comes. He's calling. Bree. He's calling. Okay. Hello, Bree. Hello. There, hey. there we go. What happened? Yeah. What happened? To I you? had your video at first, and then when you added the other people, uh, and they started adding to the call. Yes. Uh, for some reason, my audio cut out. You want to know something? After your video. Uh, uh, and Rob, you're there, right? I'm here. Yeah, I'm we here. need your picture, though. And Bree, oh. we need your picture. And we need yeah, Phil. We need your picture. On. Oh, okay. Chip, we uh, need your yeah. picture. <laughs> Let's see here. There goes Rob's. Ah. Phil, turn yours on. Phil. Phil, are you turning it on? Phil, what happened to you? Oh, boy. Uh-oh. He spilled his coffee. Yeah, spilling. <laughs> I spilled coffee, and I just fucked everything up, right? He did. I wondered what happened. Yeah. He and, Chip, we coffee. still don't have video on you. I'm on I'm an Android back. phone. Oh, okay, call right back. There's Phil. Okay. And Bree. Where's Bree? Well, Bree doesn't have video. Android oh, he's on. He's on. That... He's on, but he's, he's not. He doesn't have video. He doesn't have video. So is, is I, Dubai a good place to visit? Me? Yeah. Is Dubai? Yeah. Oh, it's a great place to visit. Really? Yeah. Now, what am uh, I? What do you do? Bit. What do you do in Dubai oh. besides get thirsty? <laughs> <laughs> oh well, well, Alex, I actually I want to turn the show into the Food Network show and the Handy Man Hour if I can. Oh, okay. Uh, which and somewhat related to New York, we have a Magnolia Bakery here. Yeah. Are you oh, familiar really? with that? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so yesterday I bought a banana cream pie and a coconut cream pie, but I couldn't come directly home. I had to, I had to go to the hardware store and walk around. Mm -hmm. But when I came back home, I put it in the fridge, and then later I had it for dinner, and then I had a tummy ache all uh, overnight. So my question to the group is: Can you keep a banana? How long can you keep a banana cream pie out well, it before it? Why don't you talk into the it. microphone? It depends on what Talk was into the microphone. It depends on what was in it. If if there was like a cream base or something it's Magnolia Bakery. No, but yeah, in yeah. the in the in the pie, if there was a cream in there, that could have yeah, soured. A banana cream pie. Yeah, I that guess could would have, have that could have soured. That could have soured. Also, I mean, considering where you are, the heat. The heat, you know, could play into it. Yeah. Well, the heat would okay. make the milk so. whatever milk product was in there sour. All right, so the coconut cream, maybe I better throw that away. I would say that's a good idea. <laughs> but at least you were doing the manly thing by walking around the hardware store, you know? <laughs> yeah. We do that, and well, we can do it for extended periods of time. That's right. Okay, now, <laughs> so my second question, handyman hour. Uh, this is what I was going to the hardware store. Th this is the funny thing about Dubai. We only have two hardware stores. We have two. They're the same uh, company. And we only, we only have two of them. The one is small, one is big. Mm -hmm. So I went to the big one, and they didn't have what I needed. So I went. they said, oh, we have it at the small one. So I go to the small one. Mm -hmm. this, I'm carrying my banana cream, coconut cream pies around. I take a, you know, I take the, the metro, and I take a bus. So this is, I was out a lot. So that, that's why I think the pies went bad. But yeah. anyway, yeah. my water cooler has a crack in the... Uh, the water reservoir and I need a putty to to you know fill the patch or you know to patch the hole and they so they said uh, you know go to the small one we have more putty there but they didn't have it so I bought liquid nails and I'm wondering no 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 liquid what, nails is a, is a construction adhesive and uh, this one is silicon they have like 20 different varieties this one is silicone for water leaks, it says. Mm -hmm. And if this if this reservoir leaked, would it ruin the floors or anything else around it? Yeah. Well, uh, it's a tile this, floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, if, uh, if you can uh, suffer a leak and not uh, have an extreme uh, anything more than wet towels, then give it a try. But if you're if the cost of the reservoir would be more than what it would destroy, then I would say get a new one. Oh yeah, it won't destroy anything. Just some towels. We've had it leak a couple of times. But here's my question: that in the reservoir, it will touch the liquid nails. Essentially, is that going to be poisonous okay. to the water? I wouldn't. 
I don't think it'd be poisonous. But were you nodding? No, Rob. Were you? Was that? No, a, uh, no, that wasn't. Uh, he was just shaking his head. Oh, you were just shaking your head. You know, one, once it dries, um, you know, it's it's silicone. They use that as a seal for a lot of things. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, you know, it's probably not going to be poisonous. But uh, I use a thing called zero water at home, uh, and it has a little tester, and it can tell you, um, you know, how many parts per million, I guess, or of crap or, or is in your water. Do you really want to know? Well, <laughs> and with all this uh, man the, talk, I am going to say good night. Good night. Well, this good is night. hardware talk. Bye. Good night. Yeah. Uh, so with that, I'm able to test the water. What comes out of my tap mm -hmm. is like 28 on this thing. Uh, what comes out of a, um, uh, what, what's that other um, kind of uh, thing that you put in the refrigerator, a Brita? Yeah. The Brita only brings it down to 26. But when I put it through a uh, zero water, it goes to zero. So uh, I threw away well, all I the guess Brita. that's why they call it zero water, right? Yeah, and it works. Uh, you know, and I drink the water room temperature anyway. And what from what Bree says is that uh, there's a lot of air conditioning and, and so forth. Do you need to have uh, cooled water or is room temperature? Okay. Well, it has three. It has it has cool. It has room temperature and it has hot. Uh, so, it's it's very convenient. Um, uh, it is, yeah. So, all right. So that sounds like I should be okay because the putty that they had. For the po the guy said you can put this on plumbing pipes. It says for potable water. That's the one they didn't have. Well, this I, is the I, thing. I, I'd be more. I'd be more. What is that noise? What is that? What is that? I don't know. It's hey, not here. Everybody, be quiet a second. I don't know where that's even coming from. I muted. It's still coming. Huh? I muted. It's still coming. Yeah. Where is this coming from? Oh, that's... Oh, wait a minute. Somebody just did something. Who's squeaking their microphone? On Earth. Huh? So, anyway... Are you there, uh, Brian? Yeah, it's not me. I'm just... Uh, it's, I'm not even touching the microphone. I'm in my vehicle, and uh, I'm wearing my headset, so... Yeah, but it could be something in that area making noise now it seems to be okay yeah so yeah i was i heard that squeaking too it by the way jeff turn on your camera it's tv night tonight are you uh, there sorry, are, I where we were, there he is there he is no he no you turned it on then it there we go now it's, you were at the point where you're talking about potable potable water and uh, this, the the putty. right the, so the putty that they said that i could use uh they're all out of stock this happens a lot. This happened in Singapore all the time, and it happens here all the time. They just don't have. Um, they just. It's often you can't get the things that you want when exactly you want them. And, Can you get Amazon Prime? I have Amazon Prime, but they. I'm in Dubai. Do they deliver? No. Oh, okay. No. They Amazon just bought uh, what we have over here is called Souk.com. Hmm. Souk is a term for like store or you know uh, old bazaar where people would buy things. The souk. If you yeah. come to Dubai, you can go to the old souk. Uh, hold on a second, uh, Damien. It, uh, I'm I'm going to hang up on you, Damien, because what you're doing is you're trying to call in on an old. Uh, you have to call directly to Gabnet Live. You can't go through what is it the the a uh, former group call. And that's uh, what you're trying to dial, and that's why I can't take you, Damien. So call us that. using uh, GabNet Live. You should know that. Anyway. <laughs> you know. I'm sorry to take over. I, I just needed those questions. It sounds like uh, I'm going to survive with liquid nails. I'll just let it Yeah, but the drop. banana cream pie may kill you. What? The banana cream pie may kill you. I took a Pepto-Bismol oh, tablet. Okay. Oh, okay. That well, they're, they're they will save your life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think so. If you're eating rotten uh, cream, uh, just take a Pepto Bismol, and all shall be right with the world. Uh, here comes uh, here comes Renee. Hello, Renee. Hi. Wait. Do I have you in the right place? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then <laughs> so, turn on your camera. My pitch. My pitch. Turn on I your. 
New Yorker that just came here. What? And he wrote a, a guy from the New Yorker just came through Dubai. Yeah. So if you look, you look on the New Yorker this past week or whatever. Yeah. And it was kind of scathing. And and one of the sheikhs here wrote a return reply, basically what? saying they rode the they rode the metro. They visited <laughs> two malls, and, and he wrote the article. And he said it's you know it's unbelievably and, and not accurate. And then if you read the response, which is um, in our magazine called What's on Dubai, then you can see all the cool things there are to do here. It's definitely worth a trip. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it kind of it, it it kind of has looked interesting to me. You know, like yeah. it could be nice. But well, uh, we get, so we're looking for somewhere to go on a vacation. We haven't done a vacation in years. Because I've never wanted to leave long enough this thing uh, to go on a vacation, but it's time that we do. And uh, uh, so we're trying to find a place that'll be interesting that we haven't been before. She wants to go to Paris, and I'm going, I've been there, done that. How many times, you know? Uh, yeah. Let's go somewhere that's an adventure. Let's let's go to uh, Iraq. That, that would be adventurous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she had mentioned Australia. I, I like Australia. That's a, that's a great place to visit. Yeah, well, you like places where everybody speaks English. Well, that helps. Yeah, no, it doesn't help. It's not fun. It's well, not I, fun. I scuba dive. Nobody speaks English down there. Yeah, yeah. What are those talk? What are those? Very good. I liked Australia. It was wonderful. It's a great place to go. What about New Zealand? New Zealand looks fantastic. I haven't. I didn't make it down that far. Yeah, New Zealand, uh, you know, has these mountains, and uh, uh, it's just it's supposedly amazing for the yeah. In there, where where were you before? Oh, you were in Singapore, right? That's Bri correct. Bri yeah. How was Singapore? Oh, it's also great. What's yeah. great about it? Just oh. Okay, you can do so many things, and they're all it's all within one hour away from each other. Yeah. It's all extremely easy to get to. So that's like the big advantage. Right, right. But no, but I mean, Alex, I mean, seriously, if you go to – here's the thing I tell people. You know, you, New York, you're in New York, and you think New York is big. Have you, but you go to Shanghai, and then you really see big, you know. Well, uh, I mean, uh, no, Beijing, I saw big, you know, it makes uh, New York look like a tiny town. There yeah. are deals in uh, Caracas, Venezuela right now, and your dollar will go a long way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm avoiding that right now. Yeah. But Singapore, it's so amazing that, like, you go there and you just, you kind of see what the future will be like. Uh, we have a lot of that here in Dubai, too. Whenever I go back to the States, I just think it's so gentrified. It's just so old, and and everything is sort of, you know, old and creaky. The, 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 the planes, the, the, you know, the, the buildings, the, the way we do things. But you go to Singapore, and it's like you'll see well, kind of what the future is like. It's funny you should say that, because last night, a uh, girlfriend and I were discussing it as we were looking out our window. Because we have one of the most spectacular views of New York anywhere. Um, that's why people would love to lay their hands on this apartment. Uh, and we both comment on how the skyline has changed just while we've been here. You know, that it is constantly evolving. That skyline you were used to seeing in those 1940s and 50s movies taken from New Jersey of, of New York City, that skyline isn't there anymore. You know, some of the buildings are, but the skyline isn't. That that shape of the skyline. You now have the new thing of these pencil thin buildings that they that go up higher than anything you can possibly believe. Because it's hard to hit with a mm. with a plane. Because it, they're so thin. They're, so thin. <laughs> yeah, they're hard to hit with a plane. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, uh, what they've done. I I I kind of uh, said it looks like they they found a bodega they wanted to buy and then built a tall building on that footprint, you know, and then just went straight up. And so, like, some people are buying, like, three floors of these things, right? And they have these amazing views because the buildings are, God, 
hundred stories high. I mean, I, I don't know how, how tall they are, but they're huge, just huge. And so the whole skyline here is changing. So when you don't think of New York as being a modern city, uh, you got to think again. It, it, it's always, always been tearing down and building more. Right, Jeff? You know what I'm talking about. I absolutely agree. And, and my, uh, my wife was there uh, last night with uh, two granddaughters and, and my daughter. Yeah. And they, they sat at the uh, UM Plaza, mm -hmm. which is a great view. And they just couldn't believe it. They, they just looked outside for, for hours. I mean, some two people, you know, people come along and they tear, bring down the uh, World Trade Center. There's something else there now. Looks more modern than the World Trade Center ever looked, but the World Trade Center looked really modern when it was built, I think, what, in the 70s? Yeah, so, it was finished in 72. Yeah. You know, architecturally speaking, perhaps, but what about, like, in terms of innovations? Um, look, at, uh, look up Marina Bay Sands and uh, Gardens by the Bay in Singapore, and you'll see these. they have these trees that they've designed that are like solar collectors, water collectors, and they're just amazingly beautiful and I think they were in the movie Hitman 47 uh, I know that Dubai is often a stand-in for the Star Trek and the Star Wars uh, Star Trek films and uh, I don't know I, I just I'm a big fan of Singapore and Dubai I think they're very forward-thinking uh, and I think that a well, lot you, of people you know they have an advantage I'll tell you they have an advantage say over in New York this is a city that's been here how long and and you know and it got really oh, built up. It got really built up uh, around the 1850s and then into the uh, into the next century. A place like Dubai was just like a desert, and it yeah. so it, there was nothing. They they could only they could build what their imagination would lead them to do. It's the same thing with Beijing. I mean, Beijing is one of the most modern cities in the world. Huge, beautiful buildings, amazing place. And yet, uh, 20 years ago, those were dirt roads people were traveling down, you know, and nothing but bicycles. So they had, they had literally a, a, an empty canvas on which to place this new world of yeah. theirs. So that's, you know, that's... But that's the news out here is there there are less Emirates flights. They're they're uh, scaling back all of their flights to the U.S. The demand is is going down, and uh, you know the electronics ban certainly had an effect. But just the overall, um, uh, you know, effect of Trump looks like we're going to be flying Air Canada through Toronto back to Pittsburgh, and so we can use our electronics, but. The, the other thing is, is I my alma mater is uh, Syracuse University, and they had a uh, pr they had a meeting for their admitted students. Uh, so I, as an alumni, I go there and I tell the students, "Hey, I really like to go into Syracuse. Can I answer any questions?" And and invariably, all the parents' hands go up, and they always say, "Is it safe for my kid sure. with Trump at the White House? And uh, is it safe for my kid over there?" And I say, yeah, I mean, Syracuse is a great place, and uh, it's safe. You, you're going to be okay. You, you know, just any city, you got to be careful, but, uh, yeah, it's it's okay. Then the second question is, but what about the visa situation? If, if my kid goes over there and gets a degree, are they going to be able to get a job afterwards? You know, and so those are the two big questions that they're asking. And, and uh, I saw uh, 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 Jeff, Jeff's got his hand up. Yeah, I, I have uh, kids who are... You know, uh, in their 40s, and, and I actually have one uh, 25, and uh, that same culture, those same questions are what any parent would say about their kids going to college today, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. It's the same story. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think that we're seeing at least 20, 30 percent drop off uh, I know from from India to the US a lot of universities if you look on higher ed websites and look at some universities many of them were reliant on students coming from overseas they're seeing huge drops now and some of the universities in Britain are merging or closing down because of they're they're having huge uh, you know deficits uh, 
uh, and there, you know, if you remember, there was a shooting in Middle America, and and there was a a fellow from India. One of the parents said, "Please don't send your kids to America." And apparently, that's had a lot of an effect. So we're seeing less less people want to come to the U.S. Um, because you know the flights are down, the schooling is down, and uh, I just don't know if it's a good thing. Phil, what know. do you have to say about that? Well, I guess. Um Maybe if these schools have to rely on uh, students from outside and our students can't afford to go to the colleges because these uh, foreign students will pay higher fees than uh, what uh, they charge in-state or uh, U.S. students, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe uh, you know it's time we started educating uh, our kids and and not the kids of the rest of the world, uh, because these schools are greedy. They want that extra money mm -hmm. that the foreign student pays, uh, rather than the in-state or uh, and. Uh, you know, well, you you claim bullshit, but I I say, uh, hey, uh, you know, I'm it it cost my friend, uh, and this is eight years ago. Uh, his kid went to USC, and it cost him a quarter of a million dollars. It's more than that now, mm -hmm. and and it was nothing special. The kid, you know, stayed in a in a room with four other guys, uh, and ate at the uh, cafeteria plan. So. All I know is if it's going to cost a you know if it's going to cost a parent a quarter million dollars to send them to a top school, maybe it's not such a bad thing that uh, they get educated somewhere else, and uh, we don't have to compete with those high prices that they get from yeah, uh, our students. Uh, Renee has her hand up. How do you say Please. What he's telling you is that there are people across the planet that don't want to step foot in our country because of who's Good. in office. Yeah, I knew you'd say that, Phil, because Good. because you're, you're, you're such a nationalist that you don't want anybody else coming here. But the fact is that that has I, not I, been I, that I, has not been the, the spirit that, in that which this you're, and this was on, not. Phil. Wait a minute. This is not been, that is not the uh, the way and the and the uh, way in which we have have uh, created this country. We based it on Come on over here, everybody, all around the world. We need everybody's expertise. You don't want these people coming over here? You better throw your fucking iPhone out the door because you aren't going to get the kind of brain I work give a that's going to be able to do that. You don't, get, you, don't do, you don't give a fuck about anybody, Phil. Right. Well, you know. Uh, Wait a minute. Let, 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 let Renee finish what her thought right. was. That was that was number one. Number two was. The reason kids, you know, blah, blah, sorry. The reason United States citizen or kids cannot go to United States schools isn't because there are foreigners in our frickin' schools. It's because the people who are running the schools want money and therefore they're not letting our, the people in. And no matter what race they are, those people aren't getting in because they're not willing to pay. And the Why don't I just say? No, the school is charging too much. Education right. should be free if we want to be a leading force in this world. And since it's not free for all, we're telling everyone exactly what Bree just said. We don't want to be a world player anymore. We want to be a third right. world country. It doesn't have to be free. It has to be reasonable and affordable. Uh, that's what it has to be. And, no, if, and if we have to, you know, when I, I bought a house in 2005 and, and, and I had a regular loan and when uh, there were people that were using stated loans, cab drivers saying they were making 200 grand a year. And I had to compete on the purchase price of my house against guys that would pay anything because they didn't really qualify for the loan. They were getting these loans at, uh, at lower interest rates for a while and hoping the house would go up and they'd flip it. Well, vis-a-vis, -vis, we end up with uh, the housing bubble that, uh, that we got because people were greedy. Now, the but, schools but are greedy. And the, the school. It's not now. It's not now. It's been since the Bush administration. Well, it doesn't matter how long it's been. been. It's not, all of our kids. It's it's not, not stop right now. It's, it looks like it's, it's going to stop years. now. The, the competitive situation is people aren't coming over here. They're not paying those prices. Well, the schools are either going to close or they're going to lower their fees. And, uh, and they're going to attract 
uh, uh, you know, uh, U.S. citizens rather than uh, uh, people from outside the country. And I don't think that's a bad thing. And, and as far as not wanting people to come in, uh, our friend Mr. Trump yesterday and today. Not your friend, not, not our just, friend. Just got... Uh, uh, made a deal with uh, with uh, Egypt and and freed uh, a, uh, a humanitarian that was in captivity for three years that Obama couldn't do and uh, and but to. but uh, uh, Trump did it and the woman is a Muslim so obviously he's not trying to keep Muslims out he could have kept that one in jail but he didn't he he made a deal with uh, Sissy or whatever his name is and and got uh, got her and her. Egyptian husband uh, brought back to the United States, uh, and I don't think it was for a photo opportunity. It was the right thing to do. She was Wait, an American let's, citizen. Let's, let's just jump to the 100-day bullshit then, because that's what you're doing. Yeah, he freed a female, and and Obama didn't do it, and there must have been real reasons, but we don't so care you what. Can't the give reason. him any props for that. No. No, you, oh, you wouldn't give him any props for anything. He he, no. he, he could institute uh, uh, single pay health care and free education, and you would say, he's, you know, it's because Trump is no good. He he just did it to uh, to screw everybody. Well, what people said about Obama on the other side, he couldn't do anything good as well. It's a, you know, it's partisanship. Yeah, well, and 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 this is just an example, and and uh, you know, unfortunately, Renee is spewing the example out. You know, no, if, uh, I'm just giving it right back after eight years of or uh, seven. Oh, no, that's seven bullshit, Renee. Of listening to you people belly whine about his birth certificate and <laughs> being born in Kenya as opposed to being born in Hawaii. You know, I can. Give, I've still got four point oh, eight years thing. left on my. What bullshit. you're doing is you're impeding the economy. You're impeding growth. You are, you did. Um, and you guys did that, and you guys did that for eight years. So what? Exactly. That was eight years ago. So what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. So what? Right. So what? Right huh? under the carpet. Oh, it's time to move so on now. When I was five was years old. There was this kid, Alan Schiffman. He says, "If you walk on my property, I'm going to walk on your property." It sounds like a four-year-old. And that's exactly what these people sound like. Right. Eight years of this shit, connect? and we're we're not going to let it go. Ah, not to mention, well, not to mention Trump. Not to mention Trump deserves everything that comes uh -huh. his way because of the way he's talked, his actions, and things uh -huh. that he's done. You can't do one or two good things and expect everything's well, going to be saying, wonderful. Well, if you well, reward somebody for doing good stuff, they do more good stuff. If if you kick them when they do good stuff, they're not going to do good stuff. That's I mean, great it's just if it's counterintuitive. That is great oh, if right. it's Character matters. 12. If he's I'm if he's twelve a... years old, then that's perfect idea. He's a grown ass male, and he should know this shit before he got into office. And we resent the fact that we have to ra his ramp up time to becoming president is going to be so much longer than anybody else, including George Bush's ramp up time. It's disgusting and it's embarrassing. Uh, Who would have known? This guy could this guy could have been uh, fine right out of the shoot, and you'd still resent him. Who would have known? Oh, healthcare healthcare is going to be We're difficult. So hard. Who would have known? Yeah. Al. Yeah. Be there was an election in Georgia, and there was a there's a Democrat who won the eighth, I don't know, point nine percent, needed fifty percent. The documentary filmmaker, thirty year old guy. Yeah. You, do you that know this? Story? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now here's my question: um, Who made the rule that you had to get fifty percent in order to avoid a runoff? It's the state. It's monkey state okay. gets to monkey many, what they want. Okay, so here's the thing. In the state, how many Democrats are in the House and how many Republicans? Because nowadays, all you have to do is say, wait a minute, uh, we've got more people. Let's just change the rule. And he can get in. If you beat your opponent by 30%, you get to go automatically in. In other words, that's the world we now live in. Mm -hmm. uh, you follow rules if you have enough people if you have a simple majority majority rules which i thought the founding fathers were kind of against that, right. that yeah but rule. see 
that was one of it's one of the big things Republican like Republicans like to do. And the answer is Isn't to this: is that, let no, let's give it to the state and make the state decide. Well, when you pop down things like infrastructure to the state, voter rights to the state, education for all white people, and fuck all the black people for the state, this is yeah. what you get in the United States. You know. Uh, the the states uh, reflect the people that are in it, and I don't see any reason why people shouldn't get what they want. Alex doesn't want his vote not to count, uh, you know, uh, and uh, you know they could do something look, the way look, Colorado. Look, I, did. I think I think this is all a specious argument because we do have the electoral college, and it ain't going away anytime soon. Nope, uh, not okay. at all. So we're going to have to live with that. And so we, uh, you know, uh, we have to give Trump and his people props for being able to game the system. That's about what they did, is they I gamed do. the system. They used the, the, the uh, disadvantages of the system to get themselves elected. Kevin, turn your camera on, would you? Trying to. It's not showing. I'm that ninth guy, I think. Yeah. Um, you, yeah, boy. You know, it's okay. Uh, it's only eight. I might hang up and call back again. So. Try it again, and then if not, we'll just uh, look at your lovely photograph. You know, <laughs> look, our cities are old. Our infrastructure is old. Part of Flint's problem happens to be isn't that it's Flint, Michigan. It's that their sewer and their water systems are just like about 50 other cities across the United States. This little problem isn't going to go away. There, And I think it's Pittsburgh that's next on the list where they can't drink the water. If we're not willing to pay for these changes, if we're not willing to educate our people, if we're not willing to pay for the infrastructure, infrastructure, if we're not willing to upgrade the technology, we are going to be a third world country. And some can argue now that we are. Our health care is at the bottom. Our education is close to the bottom. Our infrastructure is close to the bottom. What is it that was so great right now? And by the way, these things that we are last in, you know, that we are like, for instance, what in health care, we're 36th in the world, something yeah, like that. Uh, in in education, we're we're not terribly high. Uh, what's he doing about these things? These are the things where if you're going to say, Mer well, just let me finish, Phil. God damn it! Every time I start question. talking, every time I start, I didn't ask a question. I was making a statement. Have a little respect for me, Phil. Damn it! You know. Go ahead. Ask all you want. I didn't. Oh boy, no, I forget it. Uh, just go, go, whatever you were going to say, Phil. Say it. Say it, Phil. We're waiting, Phil. I, I think the problem is, is that Republicans sometimes believe that the United States owes them something. And we don't, the United, the United States doesn't owe anyone in the United States something other than what's in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. After that, you have to make your own stuff. We have to decide if we want to be a first world country, if we want to be on top, we need to put money into the United States and we need to do all of these things that other countries are clearly doing and that are winning at. And we are not doing these things because we choose not to spend the money on us. We choose to give those monies, those funds to corporations. By the way, Phil, uh, I, uh, if, if you're not going to come back, at least sign off because Kevin can't get his picture on. OK, he, he might have gotten something to drink. Yeah, he'll be back. You know, but so I mean, no, I mean, run. it just makes me so mad. I start saying something and maybe I put it in the form of a question. He jumps right in and answers. He has no respect for me. You know, I mean, I have respect for him when he's talking. I let him finish what he's saying. Alex, I just, depends on what kind of family honest. you back up in. Yeah. What were, you, what were you saying, Brian? I was just going to say maybe it has something to do with the. Lack of noticing visual and audio cues. Uh, try to expl expand upon this. Uh, I think I, I know what you're I talking about. I have a learning about. disability, Asperger's. I sometimes I don't pick up on uh, nonverbal cues and. Uh, well, I mean, here. I will give Phil this much. That uh, the, the trouble with Skype is, is that sometimes when somebody is talking, uh, you don't understand that. Uh, uh, 
you know, you, you don't can't exactly hear them or whatever, and you can jump in on each other. Yeah, I think that's what you're trying to say. The other, yeah, the other yeah. being technological. But it, you know, I mean, if yes. if you can hear me talking, I'd like to finish my statement. You know, and it, quite frankly, I got to be honest with you. I'm getting old, and it bothers me that I, if I don't continue with my thread, I lose it completely. Okay. Sure. There was a, I there that. was a time when that wasn't so, where Phil could interrupt all he wanted, and I would just say, "Phil, hold on, let me finish it." But th now, when I come back to it, I can't remember what I was talking about. Okay. So, uh, and you have to understand why I get so frustrated, Phil, because then I lose my thread and I lose what I was saying. And you know, I I say little on this show, believe it or not. I let the panel talk all they want. I let you tell. You probably in a given night in actually talking about opinions and so on, talk more on this program than I do. Probably. All right? So when I talk, please let me have my say. Okay. You know, it, it just sounded like you were asking a question that wa warranted an answer. Yes, after I was through asking it, but I wasn't asking it. It was, it was, it was a, uh, what, what can we call it, a, one of those questions you ask as a statement. Okay. okay. Well, it sounded like that. Like, like, why do we act the way we do? Well, I don't need an answer from you. I'm trying to say, why do we not? Why do we act the rhetorical way we do? Question. Rhetorical oh, question. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I was answering your rhetorical question. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but it gave me an opportunity to go take a piss. So thank you. Well, I know at, I, you, at your age you got to go do that often. So may I, may I change the subject a little? Well, first of all, Chip, I just want to. Chip's been very quiet. Any comments on any of what we're talking about here? I did want to allude to a couple of things uh, when we we're talking about the infrastructure and uh, other countries yeah. there. America has a hard time with not in my backyard, um, uh, eminent domain issues. It, it's a lot. I mean, what was it? George Bush said it'd be easier if I was a dictator. Um, <laughs> there's, there's um, a lot of, uh, a lot of obstacles, even in the, even as Renee said, with the infrastructure, I, I uh, uh, you know, you, you have local governments and uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, older, older uh, philosophies of, uh, of not spending any money, not doing anything. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. And that's where we are. Is they, and, and the thing about education, the money goes to corporations. The thing about health care, the money goes to corporations. Well, well uh, you know, when it, com so comes, when, it com it when it comes to education and you want to talk about stuff going to, uh, uh, going to corporations, the idea of these new schools, these, uh, what do we call them? Uh, charter schools. Charter schools. Charter school, is yeah. a, there are a lot of corporations getting into that. So that's a corporate thing. Prisons are now being run by corporations so that the people who are in those prisons are in those cells 23 hours a day because the corporations want to cut the bottom line and don't want to have as many guards as they would normally have. So, I mean, the corporatization of all this stuff, I don't see why people should make money off of education. I don't see why people should make money off of our prisons, okay, as a profit-making entity. So, and we seem to be going in that direction. And, and may I say that one of the biggest players in privatized cor uh, prison systems are, happens to be in the United States, Halliburton. Yep. The GEO Group. Yeah. So, I mean, no, it, you know, I mean, the, the, the point is that this isn't, you know, we're not talking here about left-right issues. We're talking about breathable air. We're talking about a good education. We're talking about people being healthy. You know, what, what is wrong about these things, Phil? Now, there's a question for you. What's wrong about, you know, making the ability to be healthy uh, a priority uh, of this country and the ability to give people a good education through college? And Nothing, accessible. but maybe the private sector could do a better job than the government. Well, doing. what has the private sector done? Yeah, what has the private you, sector right done? Now, except, except, tell me, schools. look at what the private sector has done to the insurance business. Well, right, you asked me what they've done. Uh -huh. Right now, they've instituted uh, a, a school cho or they're instituting school choice. Yeah, uh, I kind of, you know, Charter the prisons. Yes. Yeah. 
the prisons have uh, what? How how successful have the prisons been at uh, rehabilitating prisoners prior to pri uh, privatization? They weren't successful. Well, what are they doing? The what, what, rate what, are they, what, what are they doing post uh, 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 corporatization? They're, aren't they going to be working on the wall? I hope so. Okay, see, that's what they're doing post. The Slave. corporations will start using the prisoners as chain gang and slave laborers again to well, go build walls down in Mexico, charge us for it. The Mexicans won't, Mexico won't pay a damn thing. And the people in the prisons, they're free workers. Why do we care what happens to well, them? Well, they're not free workers. Matter of fact, there's a number of companies, hardwood floor companies, that use prison labor. I know. That's why I won't buy that flooring. <laughs> yeah, the hand, hand scraped flooring. Uh, and, and, you know, to make that hand scraped uh, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, you can buy. So everybody go out and buy this beautiful laminate hardwood, whatever it is. But please note, there's a prisoner in the United States that actually hand scraped that so that it would be cost effective for you to put and, in your house. And they get paid for it. And, oh, and no. yeah, what it's, is it? What do they get paid, Phil? Uh, I don't know how much. I'm well, I bet it isn't even. I bet it is. Time a day, huh? Not even minimum wage. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it isn't. Even. It's, it's yeah. nowhere near minimum but, wage. I, well, probably not. But the, well, then is it not? Then could it not be considered slave labor? Not necessarily. Well, I mean, well, they're well, uh, or or perhaps or perhaps necessarily. How much do they get paid when they work in the laundry or in the license plate? That's uh, because they are maintaining the prison. They are they are basically working for them in their behalf to do, okay, and doing so the wash and so on. So on. So but when, when you're going out, when you're going out and you're and you're building hardwood that's going to be sold by some company who's getting cheap labor, that's nothing but slave labor for a corporate oh, corporation. I understand it builds morale and it's one oh, of the most yeah, it's really it's, in the believe prison. me, I, I don't think building well, hardware floors builds morale. And, yeah, and you know they get to keep their shivs. Yeah. Uh, yes, Chip. Um, I have a different a different perspective on the uh, prison workers. I mean, as long as they're teaching them a trade that can help <laughs> them and make them marketable as a, as an employee, um, I think I think there's some good to it. I mean, I, I don't want to see uh, uh, slave labor or, or what have you. Yeah, but I think that's all you're going to get because. How does that how does that labor force translate into uh, how does how does cutting those grooves in, in the wood floor translate into real jobs when they're not there? Because they're paying them next to nothing. So they're never going to like go earn twenty dollars an hour to do that. They, so, there are other steps besides just the scraping that is done in these plants. And, and these hardwood floor plants are all over the United States uh, that manufacture uh, the the pre-finished floors and uh, Bruce Hardwood floors, Division of Armstrong, Hartco, also a Division of Armstrong, but they're 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 all over the they're all all over the country, and uh, you know so they could work in these plants because it's just one more step. Whether they are doing scraping or they're doing milling, the milling gets done in the plant. There's only the scraping gets done in the prison. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've hand sanded a lot of stuff, and it hasn't trained me to do jack. But Bree, sure. if you want to talk about <laughs> well, the uh, a lot a lot of inmates have lived in a narrow area of a rural of a uh, urban area, and they really have never had the opportunity to learn how to work in any type of uh, organization or anything, and this the following directions and uh, just uh, working together with other people is uh, is is uh, advantageous mm. I agree I, I guess, agree but, with that I could agree with that too but but I mean in Illinois uh, there isn't a commercialization they really only sell they sell the stop signs and they make the stop signs. They make glasses for other inmates. Um, you know, they're they're not competing with businesses. Oops. 
It's Zoom tight, Rob. Oh, by the way, I just want to say something briefly here in case people were watching and wondering what was going on. I was sitting here for a while doing this with my keyboard because coffee was falling out of it. Oh, sure, I didn't see your keyboard in your hand going up and down it, like that. I, I saw <laughs> his hand underneath yeah. the table doing that. Uh, but but I, to, uh, at least so far, to speak words of uh, a great <laughs> deal of, 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 of props to the wonderful people at Apple, uh, mm. it's working 100% anyway, even though coffee was coming out of it. So, Excellent. So they It'd built... be pretty good as long as you don't have any sugar in the coffee. No, there is a yeah, sweet... So there was, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can so, vacuum it off. Yeah. As I like to say sometimes, those third oh. workers do wonderful <laughs> Where it worked, don't they? And those switch jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, let me I take like us that. in another uh, another direction here. Oh, uh, can, I, before I think... we dive into that, can I tell you something? Uh, what? Okay, so you know how when Scott gets upset with Phil, he goes to church. Yeah. Well, when Renee gets up with gets upset with Phil, she goes to get Botox. So look right there. Uh, that's my bad film. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay, I think I can actually bring okay. this up full page so Hold people on. can look go. at you. There well, we I go. I don't see her camera. There I we go. see the elephant. Yeah. What? No, I disappeared. I would never do anything in audio. I just don't again. use video at all, like usually. Yeah. Is that better? Oh, wait, now we just lost Renee's picture. See. Renee, okay, where'd you go? Turn, no, turn the camera on again. Uh, let me. It's disappeared. It's on Facebook. It's disappeared. There's the elephant. Wait a minute. Nope. Hold on a second. Uh, I want <laughs> dynamic view. No, I, I want have, exit I full screen. Camera. There we go. Camera. Okay. Uh, I can't do it. What? Anyway, I was saying that I got Botox done because I didn't like what Phil was doing that you people are doing to, in between my eyebrows. So I can't make frown lines anymore because I had. So look, Scott goes to church. I go to a, a cash only doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already discussed the botulism in uh, pie, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Excuse me, folks who are watching the TV. I was having to readjust the screen here. Uh, <laughs> let me bring up some other stuff here. That, I just uh, rant. And, and this is the one that, that affects me personally, okay? Uh, the headline, FCC relaxes rules for TV station ownership is a wave of consolidation on the horizon. The Federal Communications yeah. Commission continued deregulation efforts under the stewardship of the new panel Republican Chairman Ajit Pai, um, uh, re <laughs> relaxing two key rules Thursday affecting TV stations and telecom companies. Uh, both moves were approved two to one by the currently undermanned uh, panel. There, usually the FCC, I think, is what, five people, Rob? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, right now, it, right now it's three, uh, with Pi and the panel's other Republican, Michael O'Reilly, voting to uh, approve over the dissenting vote of uh, Mignon uh, Clyburn, currently the FCC's only Democratic commissioner. Yeah. The agency's approval of Pi's order on TV station ownership changes the way those stations calculate their footprints. In effect, Pi's move makes it easier for TV station groups. Excuse me, I'm doing this so I can. I'm not doing my Hitler impression. I'm trying to not sneeze. In effect, Pi's move makes it easier for TV station groups to grow without tripping uh, uh, a federal cap on their size. And as a result, it could set off another wave of industry consolidation. Um, as reported earlier, Sinclair broadcasting was quick to take advantage of the relaxed rule announcing today the acquisition of 14 TV stations from uh, from Bonton Media in a deal that until the rule change would have put Sinclair over the cap so this now means basically what a shorthand for it is uh, the FCC is allowing people to own a hell of a lot of fucking TV stations it'll just, it'll just destroy a lot of jobs like it did in radio yeah uh, uh, Jeff did you have something you want to say about this yeah I was going to say the uh, as far as radio goes, does it does it count anymore? Well, this isn't radio. This is television. I know, I know. But I, when you started, you started but look what it did. Yeah, what, but, but you have to look at what this kind of uh, 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 deregulation did to the radio business. Yeah, it's going to do it to the TV business as well. You know. But one of the things that changed the radio business is uh, the internet. 
Alex? Well, I don't th- uh, Yes. In, in, yes, including Bri- Gapnet. Bree, what were you going to say? Alex, uh, you missed one other piece of uh, news story that was last month, and that is uh, foreign ownership is now allowed. In broadcasting? And, yes. Yeah, look it up. Wow. Might have missed it. But uh, wow. you were talking about Australia earlier. New Zealand, they allowed foreign ownership. The Chinese really? have come in. They're buying up some of their television. There was, um, <coughs> excuse me, there was uh, in D.C., there was a Chinese-American guy that was running a radio station outside of D.C. on AM, mm-hmm. broadcasting um, like China Radio International type of programming. Mm-hmm. Under the Obama administration, he was, uh, they were looking into him as a, foreign operator, agent kind of a person, because he was facilitating, uh, essentially the Chinese were funding some of his acquisitions of radio stations. Now, apparently, that's not uh, illegal. It's okay. Uh, So just type in uh, FCC approves foreign ownership, because I'm sure I saw that last month. Wow. Wow. It's crazy. It's crazy. This is, you know... um, It went... But but no, what I was saying to uh, to get back to what Jeff was saying, Renee, do you have a camera? What's what's the problem? No, no, we have. I think it's because of the amount of people we have. We, I don't have a camera anymore. Uh, but it, it, why isn't this the same thing about well, when it, it sounds like the same thing to me as Rupert Murdoch being allowed to own us and come in and do all the nasty things that he did with Fox? So anymore. now we're getting other corporation or other industry. Um, countries with other billionaires coming and doing the same thing yeah well Rupert murdoch's a citizen of the united states yeah murdoch became a citizen of the united states so we could own radio and television stations dual dual citizenship no well, he no he has dual citizenship in the eyes of 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 australia where he's from but it doesn't have dual citizenship in the eyes of the United States. The United States does not recognize that dual citizenship. He had to become a citizen of the United States in okay. order to own a broadcast organization. So, uh, but anyway, getting back to what Jeff was saying, um, you know, what happened in radio uh, already destroyed it. I mean, um, I think that radio is in a terrible way. Uh, and uh, if, for instance, radio stations now, most of them are being run remotely. You know, they're not even the the stations they're own. Uh, there aren't local. There isn't local programming in a lot of markets. Yeah, there's local programming in New York because this is where it's all done. But most of it is like when you go to a talk station in uh, most of the rest of the country. I'd say 90% of the programs on that talk station are syndicated. You know, there's no, no local voice happening. And in some markets, it's, it's uh, you know, I can I, I literally look up talk stations around the country where there is no local talk show host. So mm-hmm. what? how is this going to affect television? They're going to look for that same way to cheap, you know, they're going to buy all these stations and then somehow in order to make a profit and pay off how much they cost them to begin with, they're going to have to start cutting corners. They're going to start consolidating newsrooms. Yeah. And you're not going to have a new, like in New York, uh, Channel 11, uh, Channel 9 and Channel 5 are owned by the same and ch- company. Uh, and, and, and Channel and, 2 and, wait a minute. Chan- and, and, uh, and 55 are owned by the same. Yeah. Channel 2 and 55, uh, the Long Island station are owned and by. D- and WPIX, well, that's still, that's still Tribune, isn't it? Yeah. That's I don't know if it's Tribune anymore, but it's I, I don't know that they're affiliated, but I know that nine was sold to the Fox. It's a Fox station. It's now. a Fox station. Yes. And, and because of that, they have scaled back their news. They just I think they only because they're in New Jersey in order to keep their license. I think they maintain a New Jersey bureau. But there there's uh, they've they've decimated the, uh, the the Channel nine news. So what we're saying basically is this con- this uh, deregulation is just more of the same. Yeah. Uh, and you know if you if you wonder where people are going to go to get news, they're unfortunately going to go to the internet, which is going to be gutted by net neutrality. With the cutbacks. Net it, it, that, that, yeah. Uh, there you go with that one. Hey Scott, how are you? You haven't said a Out word control. tonight. Uh, you've been very quiet. Very quiet. What? Your microphone isn't even on. It is on. 
No. <laughs> He's pantomiming. Yeah, well, you can do pantomime now. We're doing the Facebook thing, you know, so you, people can see you nodding and bobbing your head up and down. See, I'm working on my pantomiming. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean. But the same and, thing is going to happen. Clinton. Didn't Clinton, uh, Clinton's FCC, yes. deregulate radio? No, he, no, yep. he deregulated yep. radio. It was Clinton part of it was absolutely. part of a uh, telecommunications deregulation that took 1996, place. 1996, I believe. Yeah, but it wasn't just radio. He he was also signing stuff that had to do with phone companies and stuff like that. And I think he saw the larger picture, and that's what he was signing for. He didn't realize that what he was signing was the death of, of broadcasting as we know it. Right. Because what it was is, you know, you used it was the seven, seven and seven rule. You could own seven AM, seven FMs and seven TVs. And you could own uh, all uh, own three and uh, three of those in a market. But you couldn't own like two AMs and two FMs. You had to have an AM and an FM and a TV. If you had a newspaper, you could only have one of those entities in a, in a market. Then all of a sudden deregulation comes along. You got a company like Clear Channel, which is now iHeartRadio. Uh, who suddenly buys up 1,200 radio stations and then suddenly finds they're having a hard time paying for them. Mm. Well, you know, before deregulation, there was a thing in broadcasting, and Rob will remember this fervently, that you had to, before you were, got a license or had a license handed over to you, you had to pro prove financial li reliability, right. that you had the finances to run that radio station and, and whatever. Once deregulation happened, it didn't matter. And then all of a sudden, you saw radio stations going bankrupt, something you had never heard of in broadcasting before that. That's right. You know, so you're going to see and, that and, happening here. Yeah, and exactly. I think by doing that, they what they did is they devalued television. That's what happened to radio. It got cut so devalued. Everybody chewed it all up, and they and they got huge. These companies got huge, but and they became insignificant. Yeah. Radio has become almost uh, insignificant, and TV's on the way there. Yeah. Well, wait a minute, Chip. Wait a minute, Chip. All of a sudden, you cut out. Did you pull your mic out of the? No. All of a sudden, you don't have any sound. That's why. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> yeah, my 16-year-old or my uh, my teenage kids don't even know how to work a TV. All they watch is YouTube. Right. Yeah. So you've had all these you had all these really pretty good paying jobs in broad you know, I've been away from New York TV. I I have satellite TV now. I don't have Fios anymore. And because I'm a a New Yorker and I have I have family that lives there, I turned on the satellite I gave my brother's address so I get the New York TV stations. And since I'm watching them again, what I see, the difference between when I left 10 years ago and today is stark. Even on the O&Os in New York, you see they've completely devalued the local news. It used to be a cash cow. They used to pay guys like Chuck Scarborough and Sue Simmons and those folks a ton of money. Now, those big contracts, the sports guys, the weather guys, they get young kids to go on the air and they pay them nothing. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, you, you would think these people were making decent money. I'll, I'll tell you, over, over, Sirius was a good example of, of, of being bad pay. You know, I mean, um, I had a producer who was making $30,000 a year and expected to live in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> Try that one on for size, you know? I mean, it, it, the broadcasting business is not a place to make a great living anymore. But, but let me ask Phil. Phil, because you're our dissenting person on the panel, and we don't want to bully you. We also want to drag you into this discussion. What is right about this deregulation? Um, the, because... Uh, and you can, you know, you do have the option to say, well, it isn't good, but go ahead. Well, I like deregulation, uh, and I I feel that when you deregulate something, you let the market reach its uh, its correct level. Uh, now, well, but can I, I can I, I just say the something? The problem with when you deregulate something is that the pendulum tends to swing too far in the other direction. So, uh, you know, when they have these. Um, 
when they have these restrictions like 777 and then all of a sudden they open it up and you can have many, many more, it creates other problems. Uh, what they are, I don't know. Well, you, you have in the case of iHeartRadio, a company that's close to bankruptcy with, oh. with, with about, I think, over a thousand stations now. Well, that may be good for the market because when those stations oh. come up, it, it, they may yeah. go more independent. Oh, well, but they, not they, happening. It's not, because they'll get sold it's, off it's, not as a thousand station block, not, but they'll it, get it, sold it's off. Not, as, it's not going to happen. You know, with, with the deregulation the way it is, when they get sold off, they get sold off to all the other people who are going bankrupt. Oh, That's exactly uh -huh. what happens. But yeah. The, Phil, I, yeah. What do you think of antitrust laws? Um, I, you know, uh, they're I see Jeff they're, smiling. They're to keep some some corporations from getting too large. I love watching uh, Jeff. I don't know. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff. Jeff doesn't have to say a word now that we kind of do TV every night because you can see the look on his face. I've seen this shit. This is him. I've seen this shit before. I've lived through this shit before. This guy's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I love you. Anyway, <laughs> you know it's. Uh, I'm saying a word. I'm right? I mean, I'm interested to. to see what happens right now. You 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 didn't have antitrust laws, so those made a. Uh, uh, a corporation like iHeart uh, 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 available to do what they did. Now that they're in a situation where they've got all of these licenses and all of these stations and, uh, and they're not making money, maybe the pendulum is going to swing back the other way and it'll, it'll go to more to the independent guy. Not you know something? I, like you did for the airline? You're, you're, sorry, you're, yeah. you're living in a, in a dream world, Phil. Pendulums don't swing in situations like this. They swing one way, and then they get stuck there. And, and people are not used to having them swing back to the way they were. Are we going to go back to 7-7-7? Seven, seven, and seven? Not, a, not a prayer, okay? Not Unless a prayer. there's only 7-7-7 seven, seven, and seven in the country, because everything else is bankrupt and nobody gives a crap. I mean, that would be the only way. I, I mean, mean I, you've got to remember that the broadcasting has always been considered to be a public service of sorts right. uh, that that the public relied on radio and television as a form of communication and a way of taking the community and binding it together. It became a rallying point, a place they could all get together. It's not that way anymore. It's not in the, they used to be, you had to serve in the best interest, convenience and necessity was the term. And you had to prove that every three years to get into license. You had to prove that you worked in the public uh, convenience and, and this, uh, interest and necessity. And uh, you don't have to do that anymore. You know, it, it, damn it all. And so, therefore, these various cities that they're in are not having this link to uh, communications device that they once trusted and needed. And, and uh, now that's why they're going to the Internet. And the Internet, the Internet to me, is like sending your kid downtown where all the hookers hang out for an education. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, right. I, because I there's, there's no guardian of, uh, of, of the message. There's no guardian of the truth, and, and anybody can say whatever. And because right. you print it on a website, people believe it. In the, in the media, you couldn't do that because you had to operate under those rules that Alex talked and about. Alex you Jones, could challenge your license. Yeah. And you, Alex Jones couldn't have come to the prominence that he's come to if right. it weren't the Internet, for the Internet. And he spouts, he spouts continual lies. I mean, not just mistruths, but just bold-faced lies. And he gets away with it because there's nobody to tell him he can't. Well, and there's that, that I saw an interview with that guy who runs all those fake news websites like abc.com.co and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. He was right there on television in an interview saying, yep, I run these websites. They're extremely profitable. I realize that the information. Tell them how they're the profitable, field. though, Rob. You, you oh, tell, because of the clicks. The clicks. You get so yeah. many clicks, you start getting paid for those clicks by YouTube yeah, exactly. and so on. It's, it's made him a very wealthy man, and, and he and makes no apologies for it. That, but that, he's, that situation he, with the pizza joint in yes. Philadelphia was started by this guy and then repeated by Alex Jones where it caught fire, and then some guy read it and went down with a gun and started shooting up the place. Right. We have absolutely no checks and balances anymore 
on information. And I've got to tell you, when when all of a sudden all this uh, uh, freedom, all this all this freedom to do business uh, start, starts to get people killed, I think you have to ask some questions. You know, you have to Not ask some questions. if you're Republican, questions. you believe that it'll somehow work itself out because people are, I guess, ultimately good. Business is ultimately good and cares about anything but a stock price or a bottom line. You know, when did that come about? I'll tell you, there was a time when certain businesses did care, oddly enough. Uh, but that was a long time ago. Well, yeah. Uh, it, it makes no sense. Am I right? Am I right, Jeff? Is my, is my recollection correct that there was a time when businesses worked with a certain amount of ethical uh, I mean, there were companies that didn't, too, that we can talk about. You know, they were the big billionaires in this country. But but they, basically, corporations, companies, and so on, when we were coming up, I think cared about their customers, cared about the public. Maybe so, even cared about their employees. Yeah. Sure. Jeff, am I right? Or do you remember that? I don't remember that. You don't remember that? You think the corporations have always... It at certain levels. Yeah. Because your your customer is your whole business. Yeah, but and you you've, you've kind of still work on that. Otherwise, you lose your product, your service, or, or whatever else you do. Yeah. Not if no one cares. Well, then you have no business. <laughs> well, no, the, no, no. People have to do business, right? If if service sucks everywhere. <clears throat> And, and businesses don't care everywhere, you can't get good customer service anywhere, then you're stuck. It's like, it's like the telephone companies and the cable companies. You, you're, you're stuck with your choices, and none of them do a great job, and they, they don't strive to do a great job, although they say they do. You know, that's what you got because yeah. you've got two or three choices maybe. In my case, in this neighborhood, I got one choice. Verizon Fios or a satellite dish because even though there's a company that owns the cable company that owns the rights to this area has decided that they don't want to spend the money on the infrastructure to put the cable underground so if Fios does the wrong thing by me I don't have another cable company to go to same thing here yeah I mean and all you have to do is go into a big box store and uh, get customer service. I mean, they, they don't care. I mean, no, Walmart, not Best Buy. It's not I walked true. into Home Depot the other day, and I was so annoyed. I bought a whole – I put a powder room in downstairs in my in – because my, so, I sold the house, right? Before I sold the house, I put a powder room in that was was a roughed in – like I was using it as a closet. I bought a toilet. I bought a, I bought a, a, a vanity, a sink. I spent all this money. And then I ordered it online, and Home Depot has this deal. You can order it online, and then you can go pick it up, right? They'll, they'll have it ready for you. You go and you pick it up. You bring your number and all this. We went down there, and the guy didn't have anything ready. So I nope. said, okay, well, we'll go out and eat. We went out and we ate. We came back an hour and change later. They had – now they're going – now they're sitting around the counter going, oh, well, this stuff's heavy, and we have no one really to do it. I'm sitting there going, you know what? That's your problem, not mine. I need this stuff and I need it now. I waited around in the store for almost an hour for someone to go pull it. They don't give you a customer service. They have crappy customers. That service. was bad salesmanship. They overpromised and underdelivered, which is something that happens a lot. But when I think of customer service, I think of when I call on the phone and every time they uh, they put me on hold or they get uh, or they change a, a sentence, they apologize. I am, so, oh. you know, I tell them, you know, will you stop apologizing? You know, I, I, you're doing the job. You know, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I had to put you on hold for. 30 13 seconds. My apology. I said, you know, just uh, enough of that. But we have gotten that our expectations are not realistic. The promises that some of these companies make are over promises and really aren't realistic in order to uh, try to attract people. And Is that fraud? They, hmm? Is that fraud? No. It's, it feels like fraud. It, it feels like fraud because uh, you get people that overpromise. You know, I'm sure Home Depot or wherever you went uh, had full intention of having those products ready for you before you went and ate. But unfortunately, uh, they can't meet those expectations, and they're so you know, we should they, lower. 
Wait a minute. Let Renee so, speak because I we don't have a camera on her, and so right. she has to jump in. So we're going to lower our expectations because Home Depot doesn't want to pay a reasonable amount for these people to do their job, to be happy in their job, and to do their job. But we're wrong, and we have to fix us. No, not they need, need to pay need their service Renee. industry people more. No, what you need to do is go to a place like General Plumbing if you have one in Hawaii. Yeah, good luck with that. They they closed all those places down. That's they came into these communities and they staffed the hell out of these places and they got everybody to switch and buy at these big box stores. Once those other places closed down, what'd they do? They cut back on staff. You walk around these stores, they're empty. Well, I'm not supporting the big box store because I feel that they're the evil ones. Uh, no. But uh, how you do know, you how do you I, separate well, that from everything else that you? Well, uh, you know, uh, th this is all part of the big business. Uh, the uh, you know, no, America has has allowed this to happen because they're greedy. You, they've taken all those good paying jobs where people had health benefits at the local hardware store, who knew. Uh, you and your family and the things that you needed uh, and they uh, now they're working for nine dollars an hour saying welcome to Walmart you Which know uh, and and they don't have any benefits and I, I've yeah, but in on, the past there's uh, a book called the big box swindle and it's a, a book that I recommend if you can still get it uh, that tells you you know why and what's happening with these big boxes that they move to an area and 15 years later they abandon that building and because all the other little stores have moved to that area too right yeah. around them and then they go back to but, the other side Phil, of town uh, yeah. and uh, you know and and they build a new store Phil, and that store sits empty what right. do you say though to somebody like for instance uh, I don't who likes the big box stores nobody really but there are some good ones. I mean, is Costco a big box store? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But they're a good one. But they're a good one. They treat their people well. They treat you well. They're, yes. They're, the, the customer is their prime. And the same thing is true of Amazon. Amazon has yes. a policy that the customer it has to be satisfied first of all. So Not they brought about uh, they up. brought about a culture that everybody else has adopted now about, I don't like this. I want to bring it back. Great. Bring it down. You know? I mean... Costco, I had what something here a couple of weeks ago that was almost three years old that broke, and they replaced it. It was vacuum cleaner, uh, Dyson. They replaced it, and uh, uh, I had to pay about fifty bucks more because no, I I got money back is what happened there. I'd paid five hundred for the old one, and the price in the store now was three fifty, so I got one hundred and fifty bucks back, on top of getting a new vacuum cleaner. It's that attitude because they are not going to take a loss on that. Dyson will take Nordstrom's, it Nordstrom's Nordstrom's functions that way too. <clears throat> yeah, uh, there's yeah, a story. I don't know if the story is true about a guy who brought a set of tires back to Nordstrom's, and even though they didn't sell tires, they gave him his money back. Well, <laughs> I, I, I can't believe that's a true story. Though. I know it, it's probably folklore, but I, I can <clears throat> tell you, I I. I if I want to buy a robotic vacuum and I've had a bunch of iRobots, the Roombas, yeah. from Hammock or Schlemmer, I ordered it. I got it. My cat hair, the cat hair, the long hairs have destroyed like four or five of them. <laughs> I've returned every one and they send me another brand new one. I got to a point where I said to the woman on the phone, and this was after I think the fifth new one. And this is, you know, a couple of like maybe 18 months, two years now. Mm -hmm. And I called her back and I, I called again. And I said, look, I got this problem again. Uh, OK, send it back. We'll send you another one. I said, you know what? Maybe we should stop this. And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, you're sending new vacuums. I'm having to keep sending them back. It's a pain in the ass. I have to clean this thing. It's not like I don't clean it and take care of it. It's I, I, I maintain it. I'd rather just vacuum. <laughs> so I sent the last. I sent the last one back, and they sent me my money back. So two years later, after having all of these vacuums, they gave me my full money back, and I could. They still offer that same deal. Yeah. You want to get a Roomba? It's full money back, forever yeah. for the life of the time you own it. It's great by, customer. By, by the way, we lost Renee. I, I don't know why, but Renee, if you're listening, your presence here is always appreciated. Okay. 
I, I think she probably left because uh, she may have it, it, she may have gotten frustrated without having a picture. Uh, you might be, you might have a camera now, Kevin. For all we know, uh, Brian. I was just going to say about the Amazon thing. Yeah, I shop Amazon. I do rather extensively shop there, and uh, yeah, they are. They do have they do have wonderful customer service, but I honestly don't see that lasting. Why? That much longer if uh, you know they they continue to treat their employees the shitty way that they are well, reputed well, to, well, okay. and that I have I myself have seen firsthand. I didn't know they treated their people. That's well, that's up. kind of the point they, that I I'm wanted to make was with Home yeah. Depot. Yeah, my mother-in-law works for Home Depot right now, yeah. and they treat them like shit. You could tell okay. they you all walk around disgruntled. Yeah, you cannot. Not only are they understaffed, but they run their hours through a computer and what the computer spits out is when you go to work so you have maybe Tuesday and Wednesday off this week and you have Thursday and Friday off the following week or you have Monday and Thursday the following week mm -hmm. and people get pissed off at that you know you can't you, have a life you're you, you you're, can definitely tell I mean the guy behind the yeah. counter was starting to tell me his whole story as to why they didn't have anything ready bitching and moaning and complaining and, and uh, you know, as a customer who was frustrated because I, I wanted to get in and get out, and that's the reason why I didn't – I mean, I'd gone there to look at the stuff, and then I ordered it online when I was ready, and I expected to get in and get out. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and the guy's going, well, we had somebody calling sick, and then this one, we're shorthanded by two people, and, and the other guy left early. And I'm like, hey, you know, that's not my problem. You mean they yeah, don't – I had the same thing happen with two pieces of lumber. And they didn't have it ready. You, you mean to say they don't put their pants on two legs at a time? That they're human beings, and uh, but you know their corporate structure is over-promising, and now you had expectations of what you were going to receive. Those expectations weren't met, and uh, you know, and and you realize that maybe buying from the big box is not as good as you think it is. People people buy you know stuff there, and it takes hours to pick it up. Uh, the only reason that I go there is because my local hardware store doesn't have it, and I still got to drive 15 miles to the big box store. So well, they're getting me only if somebody locally doesn't have it. Let me explain what brought me back to a, a big box store, okay? Uh, what brought me back to a big box store was that I was shopping at Amazon, which I love. Uh, you know, uh, they're terrific. Uh, I'm assured that if I get something and it doesn't work, they're taking it back. If I don't like it a month later, they're going to take it back. Yeah. So I love Amazon. But the trouble I have with Amazon is they ship using the post office, and the post office in our neighborhood sucks. And half the time, <laughs> I'm getting a notification that, well, the address is wrong, or I, we couldn't get in the door, or whatever. And I'm here. You know, I hear the doorbell. Start a subcontract, though, with... Uh, right. So... Uh, so your anyway, to deliver your packages. Yeah. So a lot of them yeah. are doing. It. Yeah. Last mile kind of thing. Yeah. So what happened is I've many times had to yell and scream at them. I've gotten well, I got a couple of one at least one free camera I'm using here because you know uh, it it never got to me and then they said well we'll send you another one right now and if, I said what happens if the other one comes they said keep it. But the thing is that when I bought uh, when I bought certain higher items, like I ordered a flat screen TV from Amazon, it came here, it was broken. Okay, that was a self fulfilling prophecy. That was a self fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, it was. It was, it was broken. So I said, "Fuck it." I called Amazon. Uh, the uh, in fact, the company was subcontracted to another company. They called me and they said, "Just send it right back. Everything's okay." We'll have somebody pick it up. So I, I wanted the TV set. So I called, looked at Best Buy online, and they had the same price for the same screen, right? So I ordered it. The next day, it was there. It was delivered. It was installed by some people, you know, who made sure it was working before they left. And I said, you know, maybe there's a new world to be found in buying stuff from Best Buy because I know that I can I can go right down to Best Buy and buy it now, or I can order it online and have it delivered tomorrow. And they will, if it's a TV set, they'll install it and do the whole thing. So the big box stores are starting to compete now very nicely. 
with it depends so I, on which big box store it is, obviously. Well, I, but, I, had, no, it, I had sworn off Best Buy. I had sworn off Best Buy for years. Yeah, and, but what and, Phil is saying, I think, is right, is that companies overpromise, and then they expect the people down in the field to do all this shit. Yeah. And, and if they're not getting support down on their end, it's not going to, you know, trickle back to the customer. I found that there's only two ways to make a dissatisfied customer. You either tell them you're going to do something and you don't do it, or you leave them to believe that something's going to get done and it doesn't get done. That's it. That's the only two ways to piss people uh, I'll, off. I'll tell you, my, per, my, per, my perfect not. example. What, what, what were you going to say? That, Wait, Renee, no. what were you going to say? Yeah. It's but, not the only way to piss off your customers, but it's really a shitty thing to do. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, yeah, I, I wrote a big thing that I wrote to uh, Livestream, which I'm going to do away with probably not this month, but next month, because I want to make sure this is all working just fine. OK, <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and after writing this whole impassioned letter about why they don't fit into the marketplace, because they're charging too much and giving back too little. In fact, they were even saying, and you get Facebook and Periscope <laughs> and uh, you, YouTube. Uh, uh, if, you, if you buy the $200 a month program, and I wrote and said, you know, these are being offered for free. You should on your small end, on the lowest price plan, offer all this stuff. I said, you'd be surprised how much more money, you know, you, you, they'd be surprised how much more money they would make because of people who would, wouldn't mind spending 49 bucks and getting a little bang for their buck. But there was no, there's no bang for the buck that I've gotten. I showed a girlfriend a, a live stream feed from a while back and then compared it to the feeds that I have now going out on YouTube and uh, Facebook, and, and it's, there's no comparison, you know? It's like somebody cleaned your glasses. Uh, so I mean, but but the fact that the letter I got back from the guy was almost a form letter. Well, we thank you very much for your comments. Uh, we're sorry to lose you as a customer. But we hope someday we can you know get your service back or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right? It was a total blow off. Yeah, it was a total blow off. It was a total not caring. So, because there's a, probably another ten or 20,000 people like you that aren't doing that. And I resent that. And they're going to continue to collect money on yeah, it. And I resent that for one more month or so I'm going to spend the 49 bucks because I want to have that back backstop just in case well, just in case Facebook says, hey, you know, there have been enough murders on Facebook. I think we better do away with <laughs> Facebook Live. That's my greatest fear. That's right. And one individual makes the, does the crime and, you know, you punish everyone else for it. Yeah, well, you, but you so, know. And that's fair. You know they're going to be copycats. And there's no way that Facebook can stop it. I mean, there's not, they don't have anything. I don't think they have a program that says, oop, there's a murder going on. Let's cut it off. Yeah, with that murder thing, they, they said it. I'm asking everybody, was two hours too long? I mean, I don't know how much they monitor this shit, but they know. I thought they caught it in two hours. That was pretty damn good. Yeah, but they I caught it after it went on, and, and there was a rape. Yeah. There was a rape before that that was on Facebook Live, and nobody got a hold of Facebook while it was going on to say it was going on. They only got a hold of Facebook after it was over. Right. Everybody was riveted to it? Yep. How do you how do you get a hold of Facebook anyway? Yeah. Uh, well, that's that, a, that's another that's another question, and maybe it's sitting there monitoring everybody. Maybe Facebook should have a, they be do themselves very well if they made sure that they had like some method of that a whistleblower can call, just get a hold of them immediately and say something's think, going on. I don't think you can blame Facebook, Alex. Uh, do you remember in the early sixties? No, was you're a not. Gonna, I'm not going to blame Facebook, but Facebook isn't going to want the public blaming them, and that's they're going to. Kitty Genovese phenomenon. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. She was killed outside. People watched from their windows, right. and never. Human nature. Yeah, yeah, but but in this case, you have a common carrier, and you have this going on. And it's bad business for this to happen to Facebook. And the thing they're probably dreading now are copycats. Okay. Yeah. And that when when it's going on, they can't stop it. You know, no. they just can't they, they can stop it if they see it happening, but they can't, you know, they can't predict it. Yes. Yeah, so, th but they can write algorithms 
that would it, so it's the same thing with people who are trying to kill themselves there should be algorithms running in the back of facebook that pick up on all of these key words that are important uh, for those yeah, type of yeah, it's still and they, that should send an automatic flag listen there's they have a thing audio that, algorithms that pick yeah. up any copyrighted material yeah, you try yeah. to publish yeah. anything well I, I, on, on youtube uh, what i did uh is i as i played a, a, a news clip one night and what they did at YouTube is it automatically made the screen go blank while that was on. And when it was off, it went back on again. So, and the fact was that what I was using was completely in public domain. But that al algorithm didn't know the difference. Yeah. That you can't yeah. do, but yeah. a murder you can get away with. Murder you yeah. can get away with. Can't and, post a picture hey, thank, of thank you so much. Either. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> me tonight and also uh, enjoying my coffee spill. Uh, mm -hmm. which uh, took off uh, up a little bit of the program as well. I want to thank Chip, uh, one of our new people, Chip Gass, for joining us. Scott Boddicker, always wonderful to see you, literally see you. <laughs> Say something. Okay. I'm in, I'm in a storm right now, so I have to be muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, thank you. I'm sorry I blew up at you, but, you know, it gets frustrating sometimes. Uh, is my apology accepted? Oh uh, yeah, I can't even hear. Oh, no, it. I'm it's... talking. About, I'm talking to Phil now. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, absolutely. Uh -oh. Uh, yeah. You, you ought to listen to the shows and hear every time you interrupt me. But uh, uh -oh. I don't. I don't blow up at you. Yeah. Brian, thank you so much for joining us, Kevin. Too bad we couldn't see you tonight. We saw you for a few blurry seconds. Uh, uh, Bree, thank you from Dubai. Nice having you here. Nice to be here. And uh, Rob, of course, always wonderful. Jeff Stein, wonderful. Thank you, uh, Renee. We love the life out of you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back here again, uh, say, uh, oh, I don't know, in, on Tuesday. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Have, Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. And that's it uh, for us. Let me just uh, turn off uh, Skype here so the next guys can use it. And the next guys, as you know... Uh, is the uh, intersection with Jack and Amy. And right after that, uh, it's uh, going to be uh, the connections at, mid at, uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, I'll be here again back on Tuesday. Th I'm sorry if we took up a little bit of time cleaning up coffee here, but you should have seen the spill. But you know something? Apple's uh, keyboard still working. I'll let you know next time whether it kept working. Anyway... Uh, uh, I'll see you on Tuesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, should you happen to see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.